Artificial intelligence is all the rage at the moment. ChatGPT has millions of daily users, new AI tools are being released daily, and the biggest companies are racing to win the AI wars. The rise of AI has brought both excitement and anxiety. Optimists argue that the rise of AI will usher in a new era of super rapid growth and help us solve the world's most difficult problems, like climate change and nuclear fusion. While pessimists warn that, left unchecked, super intelligent AIs will destroy our politics, our jobs, and eventually the human race. So in this video, we're going to take a look at this debate, explain the arguments on either side, and try to figure out, should we really be worried about AI? Before we start, if you haven't already, please consider subscribing and ringing the bell to stay in the loop and be notified when we release new videos. Anyway, let's start with the arguments for why you should be worried. Broadly, they can be divided into three categories. Political, geopolitical, and existential. The political anxieties are about how AI will affect our politics and society. AI might entrench our societal prejudices if it's trained on racist or sexist data. It might undermine our sense of truth by flooding the internet and social media with AI-generated but false data. Or it might undermine our privacy by constantly collecting and analysing everything we put on the internet. Perhaps the most common worry is the impact AI could have on jobs, and how sufficiently intelligent and accessible AI could replace millions of humans. More generally, AI might benefit capital over labour. If workers are constantly under threat from AI, they'll have less bargaining power against bosses, which could lead to lower pay and labour standards, and ultimately higher inequality. This is one of the reasons mentioned in the open letter, signed by Elon Musk and a whole load of AI researchers last month, calling for a six-month moratorium on AI research. The geopolitical anxiety is that, because AI is such a powerful tool, whichever country figures out AI first will become the world's hegemon. This might sound dramatic, but consider the fact that, according to forecasting sites Metacalculus, there's a greater than 50% chance that AI will stimulate at least 30% annual GDP growth. The first country to integrate AI into its military will also enjoy an enormous advantage in any future conflict. At the moment, the geopolitical AI race is basically a two-horse race between the US and China, with the US opening up a clear lead in recent months. While this isn't necessarily bad news, America's continued global dominance might reduce the chances of a war over Taiwan, for example. The basic worry is that AI will shake up the global balance of power in unpredictable ways. The existential anxiety is about how super powerful AI could end up destroying humanity. This all revolves around the so-called alignment problem, which essentially refers to the fact that it's very hard, and perhaps impossible, to create AI that's aligned with our values and ethical priorities. So, for example, if we told AI to reduce CO2 emissions, it would ideally do that by building out a load of renewable energy, not by killing most of the human race. Both of these would obviously reduce CO2 levels, but only the first option aligns with our values. Aligning AI is difficult, both because AIs are, to some extent, black boxes, i.e. we don't really understand what's going on inside them, and because philosophers have been trying and failing to codify human values for thousands of years. However, these are reasons to be wary of this pessimism. First, we've heard this sort of doom-mongering about technology's impact on jobs and society before. Agriculture is a great example. In the 18th century, 80% of Brits were employed in agriculture. Productive innovations have since pushed that figure to below 5%, but this hasn't been bad news for farmers. People have just shifted to new and usually better jobs, mostly in the service industry. Similarly, pessimists have been warning about the imminent threat of nuclear Armageddon for nearly 100 years, but, well, we're still here. Obviously, this isn't a watertight argument. AI is different from tractors and nukes, and there's a first time for everything. But the point we're making is that history is full of sort of technological doom-mongering, and so far it's proved unfounded. Second, a lot of the anxiety about AI assumes that its abilities will continue to grow exponentially. AI pessimists often argue that humans aren't good at thinking about exponential growth, which is why politicians and the innumerate masses apparently underestimate the impact AI will have on society. While this might be true, it's also true that exponential growth always slows down eventually, and usually a lot earlier than expected. 
The global population, crop yields, and the speed of commercial aeroplanes are all things that looked like they might grow exponentially. Thomas Malthus predicted mass starvation via exponential population growth in 1798. Rising crop yields in the 60s sparked chatter about the end of food scarcity, and rising airline seats in the 40s inspired futuristic versions of supersonic passenger planes. In the end, however, all these trends followed logistic, not exponential curves, which means they basically slowed down earlier than people expected. Similarly, just because AI capabilities aren't currently increasing exponentially doesn't mean that we should assume they'll continue to do so indefinitely. We don't know what the limiting factor might be here. It might be computing power, training data, or it might just be that intelligence as we know it doesn't scale. But the point is that exponential growth never lasts forever. It's also worth remembering that the 2010s, when we were told that our cars would be electric and self-driving, that Musk was planning a colony on Mars by 2022, and that we'd all be living either via augmented reality or in the metaverse. Today, there are no fully self-driving cars, and fewer than 2% of the world's vehicles are electric. Musk can't even get an unmanned rocket out of orbit, and Zuckerberg's metaverse looks worse than a 2008 Wii game. The final reason to be optimistic is the fact that politicians are paying attention. One of the reasons AI doom-mongers were so pessimistic is that they assumed that politicians would be uninterested in AI, because they generally don't like taking risks on stuff like pandemic prevention or AI safety. Instead, they prefer to spend taxpayer money on things that they know that electorates will reward them for, like mending potholes or pretty buildings. However, politicians are paying attention. Italy has banned ChatGPT, the EU is currently drafting that AI Act, and the UK just published a white paper, all of which bodes well. So what do you think? Is AI about to destroy us all, or is this just techno-futurist nonsense? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. That's all for this video, but there's a whole world of TLDR content out there. You might not know, but we actually have five different TLDR channels explaining news from the UK, Europe, and the rest of the world, breaking down the latest developments in the business world, and also running through the day's most important news that you might have missed. TLDR has been doing this for around six years now, so to celebrate our anniversary, we'd love it if you subscribed. Not only to this channel, but also any of the others that interest you. They're all linked in the description. Our whole purpose is to make the world around you more understandable, to unpack the confusing parts of the news in a way that's interesting, factual, and entirely non-partisan. So if that's something you're into, then you have five channels to enjoy. Thanks for your support over the last six years. It really means a lot.